stop this shit. Because mm-hmm. every some of us <clears throat> just worked our ass off. Right. Like, I, even just hearing Cat hear all the things he's been through and why he didn't do this or go here and do this. Yeah, because you and Cat had some back and forth. Y'all cool now? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but it's, it's okay. It's okay, right. though. It's okay. We don't have to be. Right. Because his success is his success right. and my success is my success. What started it? Well, this is the thing about it. That Wanda Smith interview. Yeah. The one, the part nobody talks about is... For no reason, Cat brings up me, Gerard, and Hannibal Burris. For no reason at all. Okay. I don't even know, remember what the fucking question was. He just let it like, you like, you can't, <laughs> Real Real, yeah, they gonna make you a star, Little Real, but you ugly. Yeah. So what the fuck I got to do with this? <laughs> so you, you was in there with? That's, yeah, that's the beginning of the interview. He, that's what made Wanda kind of start fucking with him. Okay. Now don't get me wrong, like, <laughs> The whole Wanda back and forth for him is the funniest shit I've ever seen. Oh yeah, and, and you know, and Wanda wasn't always nice to all of us. No, to be quite honest, with right? You. So it was kind of it's very interesting that all this transpired. It, it was interesting, especially to see those get... two. It's it's the craziest happenstance of all right. time. But that's what it was. Cat, I don't know what even what that meant. He said they're gonna make you star the real, but you're ugly. He said, Lil Real, Gerard Carmichael, Hannibal, Can't Walk, The Mall in Atlanta. I forgot The Mall. Um, Lennox. Lennox. And no woman would talk to them. And I, to this day, man, I swear to God, I, I ain't trying to start no shit. I just don't understand. I, look, I don't think I'm the finest nigga in the world. Right. But a short nigga with a perm. Man, you know he's going to see this and respond. I don't give a fuck. God, Lord. I guess. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 it, if we were both two regular niggas in a month. Right. And he has the perm and right. the mustache. Right. And I walk in like this with my regular shit. Who the fuck you think women gonna talk to? I don't know, Rail. I don't that, know. I ain't did it. I ain't did it. I just said. So that that's the that's the only irritating thing about that for me. Like, other than that, it's like cat. Brother, if I'm an ugly nigga, thank God, because that's why nothing didn't happen to me. Ain't nobody approached me. Right. Ain't nobody asked me to do shit. I guess I'm an ugly, talented nigga. Right. And I'm okay with it. Man, it's real. God. <laughs> real, why you come up here upsetting the car? I didn't do anything. You asked about it, and I'm just saying, like, and I and look, all comics, I, you know, y'all, all of us, like, man, we, everybody's like, come on, man, you're going to go. But Cat did say that shit. It was just weird. I just, I just, even when I'm talking about Jonathan Mays, it's like, how, who do Cat Williams think he look like? Like you're not an attractive person. You look God, fucking that, weird. Real, real. He does. How about you? Have you talked to Cat? We were dressed like this nigga as Halloween, like him, not the character. Yeah. They don't dress as money. They the, dress as Cat Wim. When the last time you saw Cat? <laughs> That's a crazy story, right? So it was at the Emmys a couple years ago. So this is when we into it. Like we, this yeah, is happening. Yeah, y'all, okay, y'all go, y'all. We did the videos, it's happening. Mm-hmm. I just presented an award at the end of this. I go backstage, right? And Chappelle don't know me and this dude beefing. Right. Chappelle sees me. Oh, Laurel. Oh, Cat Williams. Cat. You know Laurel, Laurel, you know Cat. Now we just staring at each other. Oh, sh. Dave is like, what the fuck wrong with you two niggas, right? <laughs> 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 y'all, y'all just look at each other. Ain't nobody say and nothing. I'm balling my fist up. Like, you, you, you ever see the author meme? Yeah. I'm standing there. <laughs> when he says shit to each other, and he's holding this Emmy. He has his Emmy in his hand. <laughs> that was the last time I saw it. Nothing happened. He just walked away. Y'all didn't say, hey, what's up, bro? Say, it wasn't, nigga. I was, because I was still fuming at that time. It was like, yo, are we about to, like, what the fuck about to happen back here? Because it's. Kyle Morrell. Yeah, I'm a Chicago nigga too. So it's yeah. like, I mean, we're about to do this. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're about to turn the Emmys into the Source Awards. <laughs> you once said that you believe Cat was jealous of you. Do you still feel that way? Nah, I was just talking shit. I don't think he's jealous of me. I I I do think he's jealous of Kevin Hart and I, and it's so weird because he don't have to be like, brother, you are so fucking successful. Mm-hmm. Like you're one of the most successful stand up comedians we've ever seen. Mm-hmm. You didn't have the hype machine. Honestly, he's the benefit of bootleg DVDs. You remember? They, 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 yeah. 
every and this in Chicago. I remember being in Chicago at the mm-hmm. time. Everybody had that Cat Williams special in their house. Right. And because you know, bootlegger helped comedy at that time. Right. Because those people go buy tickets to see you. Right. Absolutely. The bootleg man really was your damn. He was your promoter. Yes. They watch you at the crib, and you were selling all your shows. And and Cat benefited from that, man. Right. And I think I think he's not even just stand up, man. Like anytime you see him on screen. Oh yeah. He just won an Emmy for Atlanta, right? He won that shit for Atlanta. He fucking every time you seen him on wife and kids, like he was fucking great on there. Yeah. He was like you see him on like even the school dance movie. We know that's not a good movie. Right. But only thing you watch is that clip. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. fucking brilliant. Mm-hmm. And so like. And I'm look, let me say this. I was just t- I'm talking shit. We roast each other. We comics right. like what it is. I don't give a fuck. Whatever you say about me out this, I don't give a fuck. Rat's ass. Uh, but at the same time, I do I I really do wish that we could st- I'm not trying to sound like some old let's get alone shit, but like, god damn. There's no reason why we can't do another Harlem Nights with all this great fucking talent. Or like not even Harlem Night, but just a movie yeah. that features everybody. Right. You know what I mean? All nights were great. Man, like Nick tried to do it with school dance, but like, let's find some with like a really good script. Right. Some really dope shit and like fucking get all these powerhouses on fucking screen together. Like, I'm sick of this shit. Right. It doesn't make fucking sense. You know, it's not, it's, you know, you, and it's, and be honest with you, it's a bunch of old beefs. So I'll say this right now. Cat, look, I'm just talking shit. I ain't mad at you. I can give a rat's ass. I respect the fuck out of you. You want the greatest to ever do it. Even if you talk shit about me after this, I don't really give a fuck. But I respect you, and I respect all y'all. So, like, I just think we all should figure out a way to, like, merge this shit up, man. Like, we all talk shit, man. But I don't think we should bring in our behind-the-scenes comedy mess. Right. I don't afford it. Just call, call these people. Bro. Right. Call Ricky and tell Ricky, hey, man, Ricky... I didn't like the way you was talking shit on the Friday set about how that was supposed to be your role. And just talk it out. Right. Call Sid and say, Sid, man, I felt like that joke, that really a joke that's not even a big fucking deal, and they both do it totally differently, and it's a joke none of you need anymore. Right. Let's talk this shit out. Even with Steve Harvey, talk this shit out, man. You know, Bernie, we don't have to show Bernie love by shitting on somebody else. Talk real. Bernie's one of the greatest to ever fucking do it. One of the hugest influences ever in this game. He's one of the cats to me that always gonna represent a grown ass man in his fucking business. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if Bernie would let this shit fly like this. Cause he wasn't that type of dude. He wasn't gonna be, you know, even when Bernie talked about, uh, even they've been playing a clip of him talking about comic stealing jokes. Right. But he won't, that's, that's real advice to this day. It's the reason why I don't go up to LA a lot. Right. We gonna steal your shit. <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> and so like and, and I get it because most of the time people want to do what they think is the hot thing to do. Right. If you're the hot thing, guess who they going they going to mimic mm. to make it? Cuz mm. everybody want to make it. Right. That's what they people talk about all this other shit. I'm like, "No, nah, like people steal styles and mm-hmm. dialect and all types of shit cuz they like what well, this person made it." So, you know, I don't know. That's that's I just, I, I love, and, that, and let me give you some props too, because and any other comic that does this after this, we realize, I realize how mainstream you are. I don't know if you know that shit. And you've only had us on here. Mm-hmm. And so I think, you know, for the most part, you know, I told my story, hopefully inspired somebody. Yeah. That's what we should be doing. Right. Telling our stories and promoting each other. Not even just in stand-up, in fucking movies or TV. We have to, we have movies like The Color Purple. Dion Cole, a comic, is in Color Purple. Come on, man. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Comic View, Def Jam, is in a reimagined movie in Color Purple? Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. And so we have all these things happening. We, you know, we got the, the Ava DuVernay's and the movies like Origin and fucking uh, American fiction. Man, I love every, I watch and I love everybody. Now I don't know like cornball shit. I just love, I, Shannon, I love this shit. You know, I, 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 I've been, your, once again, your show has kicked off. Outside that interview, so many comics, it's so many conversations yeah. happening. And, you know, one of the things that people don't realize, once again, I was telling you earlier that everybody's journey is different. Correct. You know, mm-hmm. I did hear Kat say, like, you know, he was talking about Kevin Hart. Like, well, Kevin Hart, how many people, you know, come to L.A. with a movie and a sitcom and this and that? Well, unfortunately, I was watching it. I'm like, dang, Kat never, he don't know 
He don't know about the festival circuit. He, oh, he don't, he don't know. Jesus Christ. You know how Kevin gets deals like that? You go to the Just for Last Festival in Montreal, which is one of the biggest comedy festivals in the world. You know what happens at the Montreal Comedy Festival? You go up on stage, have a great five to 10 minutes, and the next day you're meeting with studio execs that are actually there. They were giving people deals at these festivals. That festival helped change my life. They still do that? Still do it. Still, It's still the biggest. Like a lot of us go now and get awards from it now. I got an award as a uh, breakout <laughs> comedy star a couple years ago. And I remember my speech, it was, I tear, teared up giving my speech. You know why? Because I sat in the back of that room 10 years ago as a new face comic. It was like, one day I'm going to be up there to get an award. And I, I got my award and I stood, I literally, it was packed in there. And I looked, I said, I told the comics, I had a little speech in there. I said, let me forget the speech. I sat in that last seat back there. That last seat back there and watched these award, the award show and spoke that up that I was going to be up there getting this one day. You know, I, I'll say this once again, you don't know everybody's journey like that. Right. You don't. And I think people got to be okay with not understanding different parts of the game. Like, brother, the festival, a lot of people got, it was a time, the early 2000s, mm -hmm. man, they was giving out deals at the HBO Aspen Festival and the Just for Last Festival. They was giving cats like $500,000 and having like, like, like just money. I think Cat might have been one of the people that got one of those deals at one point. Whatever opportunities you get, that's on you what you do with it. Right. You can't judge nobody else how they took how they took the ball right. and ran with it. Right. Yeah. So that's why I, I had to say that. Cat gave me some advice to this day that I've kept with me, which is very interesting. It was weird when he gave it to me. We was at, we was at the improv. D race he still do Monday nights at the improv. And I got off stage out of great set. And some one of the cats and one of his homies said, like, yo, Cat wanna, you know, say what's up to you. And I go say what's up to him. And he didn't really say hi enough. He just gave me this advice. That's all it was. I was like, oh man, what's up, man? I'm a big fan. You know, blah, blah, blah. He's like, don't let these niggas burn you out. I was like, what? Don't let these niggas burn you out. What did he mean by that? I don't know. <laughs> but I took that advice and and it only it shows up in certain times, right? Mm -hmm. I think it shows up when my team wants me to do way more stuff and I'm tired. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or somebody's pushing me too much. And I'm like, nah, I gotta, I don't wanna be burnt out. I gotta, I gotta have it together. I think like, you know, I look at somebody like- Well, you have to learn to say no. You gotta, it, not even just no. Or not right now. You gotta learn to pace yourself. It doesn't have to, you know, that strike the iron wise hot mm -hmm. thing I think is, could be a little scary at times because that means you're just gonna do whatever. But like, if you take yourself and just pace yourself, Cause I look at somebody, Bernie Mac's a great example who we saw really, Bernie was working all the time. Yes. And you know, sometimes he, you know, I think he might have a little fatigued cause he'll, he'll, he'll come to LA. He, you know, he didn't live in LA. Right. So Bernie would come here and film and then literally go back to Chicago, which is crazy. Right. You'll film here all week and then you fly back to Chicago just to be at your house. Like that's a lot. And so I, I just wanted to make sure Cat said that, but then Chris Rock kind of said the same thing when we talked before. And I've heard it from a bunch of veteran comics about pacing yourself and not burning you out, burning yourself out. But as a, <clears throat> excuse me, as a young comic coming up in the game, there's a fine line between getting out and doing enough sets so people see you, so you get that big break, mm -hmm. and and not like like Cass said, not burning yourself out. So where is that line? Well, in the beginning, it doesn't feel like a burnout. Because you grind it. You just need the stage. You just well, Correct. you get the stage and the stage time, man. That's what you would do. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, for instance, I told you about D-Ray had a Sunday spot. Right. When I first started, he, once again, that was the hottest club in Chicago. And I wanted to go up every week. And so he's like, yo, you want some stage time? You got to help seat. So I helped seat the people every Sunday, both shows, I was seating people. And I might be catching a lot of shit from comedians. Like, damn, how you gonna do that? That's not degrading, that's not da 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 I'm like, nah, cause I get a chance to go up on the hottest stage every single week in front of the biggest crowd every single week. Right. So I don't care how embarrassing it looks. Matter of fact, it gives me a cheat code. I know everybody that's in here. I know what this audience is gonna be. I know what their energy is, cause I seat it. Everybody in here. <laughs> and so, you know, it's one of those things where like, you know, I cared about the stage time, brother. It's just getting those reps up. 
and that was so important. But then it's like learning all different aspects of the game, which is why, like, you know, I think it's very important. I, and I definitely, I'm not, I have to say this, is like, everybody's journey is different. Nobody has the same journey, right? And which is why I, I don't like telling nobody else's story. <clears throat> You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everybody's journey is different, which is why I think it's so beautiful about this time now in black comedy. You know, people don't realize that comedy is still kind of a new, it's kind of the newest, a newer entertainment than almost like hip hop is. And so we just really seeing our, our consistent millionaires of black comedians. Mm -hmm. This this is new. Like the deals that Kevin is getting, the stuff this cat has done, the stuff that Sid has done, the stuff that Ricky's done with the radio. This is just, this is consistently still almost first generation of all this type of success. Right. And it's a bunch of people at the same time. And so like, you know, I, I, I'm excited about like, we just have all these different <coughs> things happen. We have fucking hit radio hosts. We have cats who've been on several sitcoms. We have cats who, still touring arenas everywhere and selling out. We have this cat who's like, you know, you look at Kevin is selling underwear now. He got everything, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, comics are selling shoes. Mike Epps is buying his neighborhood. Right. You know, Michael Blackson's going back to, like, it's so much happening. It's like, yo, like, I, I hope sometimes that people could take time. I know it's competitive what we do, but take time to be like, yo, what, yo, we doing this shit. You know, we have a Jamie Foxx who won an Oscar. Yeah. A black stand-up comic. And we think about mostly everybody came from Dev Jam and Comic View. True. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, our people made us stars and now everybody's crossed over. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm not who, I'm who I am because of them. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.